What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is my second channel and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this and you wanna see more of that and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's talk about the new Avril Lavigne song, Love It When You Hate Me featuring Black Bear. This came out three days ago, has almost a million views. Her album is number two on Billboard. So safe to say that Avril is back. Although she never really left, she never really went away. She's been consistently putting out music for 20 years now. She took a few years off because she got sick, but she's really consistently been out there. You know, people think of her, they call her the queen of pop punk because of Skater Boy, which, you know, is an iconic song in the genre, but she was really never a pop punk artist. That was really always a label that other people put on her. She never really sounded like that. So people are saying this is Avril is back. You know, that she's returning to her roots, but that's not really true. You know, she maybe had that aesthetic, but if anything, you know, you see here, she certainly looks like an early 2000s pop punk kind of girl, right? But if you actually listen to it, you know, this sounds more like Shania Twain. If you read interviews with her or watch interviews from her, Shania Twain was like her idol. That was like one of her big things is she won like a contest to sing a song with Shania Twain. That's really what this sounds like. I actually think it's kind of weird that she looks like this and then everyone in the band is rocking out and skateboarding when it sounds like Shania Twain. This was her bit, her first song that really put her over, her first hit. I don't think this is her best song, but it's interesting. You know, this video is like her and her skater boys horsing around at the mall, right? And you would think it would sound like Skater Boy, but it doesn't. It sounds like Shania Twain. It's almost jarring, the disconnect between the skater imagery in the video and the song. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, to be clear. I think this is a great song. It's not my favorite song of hers, but it's objectively a great song. So all of that is to just sort of set expectations. Because, again, a lot of people think of her as being like this definitive pop punk artist. And she's really not. I think she's fantastic. I made a whole video about her. I think she's incredibly talented. I have a ton of respect for her. Her discography is great. I listened to it a ton while I was making that video. It definitely holds up, but she was not part of that scene. So it's interesting that this is really the first time in her career when she's really gone all in on the pop punk thing. And let's hear how it sounds. Uh oh, Avril Lavigne indicted for falling in love too many times. Look at this drip. This is really truly going back to her roots in terms of fashion, at least. She's got the like baggy trip pants, the stripes with the anarchy patch, the uh, excess buckles. I feel like excess buckles are a really important part of the fashion of that era that you don't hear about as much. Don't feel too much. We need to have excess buckles. It's an updated version of this sound, right? Because it's got the 808s in there. Got the trap drums. Oh, and look at this. Look at this. You guys remember this from like the MySpace era? The raccoon hair of the uh, late 2000s? I've been waiting for this to come back. I knew it would come back eventually. Here it is, my friends. She's got the whole scene girl look, which is interesting because she's like 38. So she was actually a little too old to have kind of had that look herself. Even though she was clearly very influential on that look, she was never seen. She's got that super dark eyeliner, the dyed coontail scene hair. There it is, my friends. She's bringing it back. This is cultural appropriation. She's culturally appropriated scene hair. And there's Travis Barker, of course. Would it be a 2022 pop punk song without Travis Barker? You gotta have the trap drums. You gotta have some sort of Y2K fashion. And you gotta have Travis Barker. Which, to be fair, makes sense because she is on DTA Records now, which is the label that Travis Barker has with my friend Johnny Minardi. So it does make sense for him to be in the video, but still, you gotta check all the boxes. And of course you have to have a feature from a rapper, which, which they do, from Black Bear. We'll get to him in a minute. It's a really good chorus. And also look at Travis here. Look at Travis. Again, I find it very interesting how all these people in their 30s and 40s, I mean, Travis is like 46. These people in their 30s and 40s are <laughs> like starting their punk phase. This is the most punk Travis has ever looked. Let's remind ourselves what Travis Barker dressed like back in the day, right? 
the giant ass Cholo Dickies with the Cadillac belt buckle, the hat at a jaunty angle, the new era fitted hat at a jaunty angle. I can't see if those are like Nike Cortez or what. Um, so this is by far the most punk that Travis Barker has ever looked. Everyone's starting their punk phase, their scene phase, in their 30s and 40s now. I'm, I'm with it. Maybe it's my turn. Maybe I should like get a hair transplant so I can grow a mohawk. This guitar is interesting. It kind of reminds me, do you guys remember Striper, the Christian metal band back in the day? They always wore these yellow and black stripes. That was their thing. I feel like her guitar here, she like dug it out of the Striper back line that was in some storage unit in Arizona. Here's the feature from Black Bear. And look, like I was saying, excess buckles and straps are a very important part of the fashion, the Y2K fashion that's really underrated. And you can see Avril understands that. It's a fashion icon. She's got it. Now, Black Bear is interesting because although you might think that he's just like the token like pop rapper guy feature that they got on the song, he is really, really fucking good. I love this song. Super talented guy. Uh, he's also a really good songwriter. He wrote uh, Boyfriend for Justin Bieber. So it might seem like they just shoved a rapper into one of these songs because that's what people do. But a lot of people don't know. He was in a scene band. They weren't good, but he was in this band back in the day. This is his band Polaroid from the 2000s. How fucking local band is this cover art? This is like pure MySpace local band cover art. It's great. I love it. You can hear how good his voice was even back then. It's not good. I've heard worse, but this is pretty bad. In any case, whether it's good or not, he does have legitimate scene kid credentials, so it makes sense to have him on the song, and I'm a huge fan of his. Like, I don't know anything about him personally, but I think his music is really good. Super talented guy. So it actually makes a lot of sense to have him on this song. I wonder why it wasn't Mod's son. I love this chorus, though. Being a scene kid holds underground cred now. Amazing. What a time to be alive that, you know, being in a shit tier post hardcore band in 2007 is now a sign of cred. What a time to be alive. Avril's press conference. She's out. Avril Levine out on bad behavior. I think this song is very good. I wouldn't say this is up there with her very best stuff, you know, like Happy Ending or Skater Boy. It's not at that level, but it's a damn good song. It seems like she's having fun, and I think it's really cool to see that she decided to go all in on pop punk because, like, the whole album is, is like this. I think it's interesting to see people like her, you know, kind of finally choosing to do that style, to go all in on pop punk, and you can see she does it extremely fucking well. Like, this is... Fantastic. This is super good stuff. And this went to number two on Billboard. I mean, MGK was the last person to chart that high with pop punk, right? I'm pretty sure. So whether you like this or not, it's encouraging to me for the genre to see signs of life. It feels like we are on the verge. I mean, maybe it's already even happened. If it hasn't happened already, it feels like we're on the verge of real true like mainstream pop punk to take us back to the the era of TRL core when Newfound Glory and Blink and Simple Plan and Sum 41 were, you know, huge mainstream bands. It feels like we are kind of right around the corner for that. Of course, it's going to be the new school TikTok Travis Barker version of that. Um, and some people are going to be pissy about that. But whether you like that or not, this is always good for the genre because if whatever, a million kids get into it because of MGK and whatever TikTok rapper doing pop punk, then some portion of those are going to go on to, you know, go further down the iceberg and get into, you know, quote unquote, real pop punk. And so it's going to benefit the genre, whether you like this stuff or not. So I think it's cool. This is good stuff. And uh, I'm excited to see what the rest uh, of the album holds. Good stuff. I mean, especially with Avril bringing back the scene here, right? I mean, Avril, she's a fashion icon. The 38-year-old was seen here. She can pull it off. How many other people can? Nobody. That's who. Only Avril. Avril is the only 38-year-old who can pull off seen here. So shout out to her.